I start with some umber paint loaded on a filbert brush and block in a simple outline for the pumpkin using straight line tilts. I go for the outside shape first and then begin to locate areas within the shape where I see any notable changes in value that I can express with a line. Pumpkins are orange in most cases, so I prepared my palette with a lot of cadmium orange and burnt sienna as well as some blue to quickly desaturate this color when it's necessary. I start on the side of the pumpkin where it's getting the most light from the nearby window. I consider this color in full light to be the local or the color most representative of the actual pigmentation of the pumpkin. While I try to find the local color, I add strokes of white tinged with orange and yellow to mark out the highlight areas. Highlights will most often be the lightest notes in a composition and can convey a lot about the surface that they are projected off of, both in terms of texture and the surface geometry. I tend to work rib by rib around the pumpkin, developing a range of tones from light to shadow as I go. I do this because I'm more likely to make better or more precise judgments about color relationships when I work systematically this way. And while I'm not musical at all, nor do I pretend to be, uh, I assume the process for creating music is probably a similar one. If a note seems out of tune in a musical piece, you remove it or you dull it down in some way. Likewise, when I arrange my tones of color in an organized pattern from light to dark, I can better pluck out any discordant note in this array than I would be able to if it was viewed in isolation. My palette reflects this progression of tone as I mix along paths of decreasing value and chroma where less light reaches the surface of the pumpkin. The stem has a darker local color than the surrounding orange, and because it's mostly vertical off the top, it receives comparatively less light uh, than the curving surfaces atop the pumpkin. With all the major forms of the pumpkin blocked in, I begin the process with a slightly smaller brush in hand of refining some of the tonal progressions where the form seems a little too flat or it's just not convincingly turning. I deepen some of the shadows and add more transitional tones to enhance a greater sense of three-dimensional depth. Because there's a lot of ambient light in this setup, the value range or extremes of light and dark that I can go are very limited. This means I have to express form using only a compressed range of value. For me, it's equally important to show form, but still convey the effusive quality of natural light. Before I move to the background, I block in the cast shadow to anchor the pumpkin to the ground plane. I work off the edges of the pumpkin and its shadow with the green-blue background color, providing a full context of the color relationships. Sometimes it's fun to set up your still life with complementary colors like this one, as it can create really interesting juxtapositions, particularly in the shadows where we can see the color from an environment having a greater influence.
I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.